Good afternoon. Damn air raid alert. <laughs> Let's talk about equipment. You open your wardrobe when you go on a mission and think, what am I going to wear today? Full body armor, Kevlar, body armor, Kevlar pants. I have underwear, socks, a toothbrush, and toothpaste. Yeah, I can't see you at all right now. See, and if you do this, wow. I am here. I'll cut the video later, everything will be fine. Please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. My call sign is Shepard. Before the war, I worked as a lawyer for a construction company. On February 24th, I volunteered for our unit. I'm still serving here as a combat medic in the infantry. Come on, Raver, you're up. My call sign is Raver. Before the full-scale invasion, I lived a quiet life. I worked as a CEO, ran a company. When all this crazy movement started on February 24th, I already knew where I was going. And 24th came. You veiled the word war very well. All this crazy movement. It is especially suitable for the call sign raver. Why the infantry? Why did you choose this particular military specialty? I went to serve in 2015, and almost all the time until the release. I served in assault units until 2021. So all these years, you could say, I was trained in assault operations, work with weapons, combat medicine. Of course, I'm interested. Because I understand that the infantry is, first and foremost, the infantry is probably the most difficult job in the war. I certainly agree with this phrase. But a commander once told us that. To fight in the infantry, you either have very big balls or a very small brain, but I don't agree with that. And how would you rephrase this phrase? I would delete the part about the little brain. Why did you join the infantry? On February 24th, there was no such question, where do you want to go? I came, I have friends with combat experience. I just went with them and I said, tell me what to do, I'll do everything with you. In your opinion, what is the most important skill for an infantryman? Wit. And a shovel. <laughs> yes, you need to be smart and always pay attention. And look at everything around you and analyze it. Mm -hmm. An important skill or not. I don't know if it's possible to develop this, is stress resistance. Because, of course, in combat, you need to have, as they say, a hot heart and a cold head. Few people realize that there is also the concept of army life. There is not always a hot shower or a normal toilet. You have to live in a trench, eat something incomprehensible. And stress tolerance is how long you're willing to endure these conditions. Because there were people who just couldn't stand it. And then they would leave, just because of life. A person can even be well trained physically. Trained. Shows good results in all training sessions. And you think this is a real super warrior. But it will live in bad conditions for a week or two. And a person breaks. Do you have any interesting stories? I see you have it. Probably the most stressful situation I've ever been in is when we were sitting at the observation post. This was the very first advanced position that monitors the enemy's movements. If he goes somewhere, he signals. And the wind picked up, it was very noisy, there is a grove around, visibility is very limited and nothing can be heard. And since we were there for three days, I didn't sleep well. I was literally passing out. I looked at a single point and realized, I can't see what's in there. This happened an hour before we were supposed to be changed. 
I'm sitting down and suddenly I see with my side vision. Something's moving. I turn my head and literally seven meters away and I counted later. Three enemies are coming. They are passing by and two of them were looking in the opposite direction and one of them just turned his head and that's how this moment happened. We met eyes, eye to eye, up close. This all really happened in a split second. I didn't have the machine gun in my hands, it was lying in front of me. And when they left, I only had time to shout out to my fellow stork, who was with me and had his back to me and didn't see the enemy. I only had time to jump and grab my assault rifle and, as they say in Somali, started shooting at the enemy. Then we started shooting back, and our third fighter, who was resting, also joined us. I saw three enemies, and then I heard that there were more of them. I counted about three of them by the sound of it and six more who were supporting them. That's how we sat there, because we couldn't retreat. We couldn't even stand up to our full height, because everything was being shot at, so we just sat there. I can remember literally every single move I made. As I simultaneously fired and took out magazines, took out the ammunition from my bag and reloaded it, I took out a grenade. My head was working as hard as it could. I think that this is probably true for almost everyone that maybe a person doesn't think fast in ordinary life, but when you realize that now every move you make and every second you spend could cost you your life, then the brain turns on in full force. And we started shooting back, and I can hear by the sound that the direction of fire was 10 hours and 3 hours. So I realized that they were starting to surround our trench, and they're getting very close. I was afraid more than anything that they would throw a grenade, because one grenade would have been enough. There was a British at four grenade launcher next to me. And I remember that we had a briefing on these grenade launchers. And I forgot everything. And it's good that they have instructions. It's in English, though. I don't speak English very well, but at that moment I learned it. It's just top-notch. I looked at it, assembled a grenade launcher, and put it next to me. I started shooting back. I hear the vehicles moving on. But at some point, we were told that the equipment had stopped and was starting to move away. So they started to move back. As we were told later, the enemies have already started to run towards us, their reinforcements were coming. And even though it was practically just the three of us shooting back, we were able to create something called fire density. So we were shooting continuously. And at the moment when the fire stopped, I had only two magazines loaded. I would have run out of ammo if this had gone on much longer, and that would probably be the end of it. But it's good that we fired back and they got scared. The whole group turned around and ran away. An hour later, we were switched. I haven't slept properly for three days, but this situation cheered me up so much that I haven't slept for a very long time. I remember when they brought us to sleep. I was still on adrenaline. I walked around, told them, and then only when I was already in bed, only then did I realize. <laughs> like, what was that all about? I came to realize what had happened very late. And you will tell us about some of the nuances of the work of a combat medic in the infantry division? First of all, it should be said that a combat medic is a fighter in the group. Wherever he is, he participates in the same way in any operations. It is very important for a combat medic to understand the circumstances, because there is no such thing as a movie. When the hero medic is running in front of the machine guns, rescues his comrade and crawls away with him. Most of these stories end with medics being killed. Unfortunately, we must reject the romanticization of war. Sometimes you have to make difficult decisions. 
If you realize that you're about to crawl to save a person, you won't necessarily be saved, but there's a huge chance you'll be killed. Then maybe you should consider leaving that person. Unfortunately, this is the reality, no matter what anyone says. Because there is a basic rule in combat medicine, it is your own safety. Because let's say you don't save one person and you survive, you can save 10 people in the long run. It should also be understood that in combat medicine you may be dealing with vomit, blood, and secretions of another person. It's in our nature to be disgusted by this, that it could be dangerous, infectious. And you have to turn all these things off in yourself, because a person's life depends on the correctness of your actions. Something like that.